Hello, crafty friends. This is the Paper Chef here. Welcome to part three of the Zany Zoo workshop series. We're gonna create this fun paper purse. I'll show you what inspired me to create this. And I just learned how to make it last night, so this is pretty cool that I'm sharing it with you. And um, we're gonna use the little leopard because we haven't used the leopard yet. We've already used, let's see, we did a raccoon birthday card. We did the knitting, we did something with the knitting llama. And of course you can put whatever critter you want on your purse, but these three will fit nicely. The little leopard or this little skunk with the bird on its head or the little turtle. But we're gonna go ahead and do this pattern. So what I want you to do while you're looking at this video or you know you have some time is cut yourself out a little extra little dancer to put on the other side to balance it out. Now, of course, if you've already used your scan and cut using the tutorial I've shared with you, then you already can cut these out with your machine and you'll know how to do that. I cut these out with scissors because I don't, I don't think I had any in my bucket of crafty goodness. All right, so we are on part three, as I mentioned, and this is a workshop series, unlike the others, because it's a workshop series that's going on for two months. I usually focus on one different product bundle, a stamp set and dies for one whole month, but because I was traveling, we are doing this for the entire month of June. We're gonna keep working with Zany Zoo. And I'm gonna have a lot more products to share once I go to a event in a couple weeks, a couple weekends. So this is what we're working on. Here's the stamp set. The paper, the whole suite is called Zoo Crew. Zoo Crew. And you could just, if you just wanna take, say the paper, and use the dies, you can do that. We'll probably make an extra critter that way. So when I say dies, like you could take this little die and just go like that. But we're gonna go ahead and use, we're gonna actually go ahead and stamp it. So let's go ahead and do that first. And then we'll do the paper purses and then we'll make a couple of them and I'll show you about what inspired me. So let me get this out. So I'm just going to I don't, I don't know where my silicone mat went, but we're just gonna take some basic white paper, put that down, and we're gonna stamp the little leopard on there, and we're gonna use Memento Black Ink. Okay, Memento Black Ink, because we're gonna use the blends to color that. We're gonna use pumpkin pie today, some petal pink. What's really nice about this paper is it inspires me the Zoo Crew paper inspires me to let me know kind of what colors to use to color things. So hopefully my stamp is still inked up pretty well. Ooh, 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 la, la. We're happy when it's, I get a good stamped image. All right, so that's good. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna make a few of these because it's inked up so well. I'm very happy about whenever it's inked up so well. Oh, spoke too soon, now it's getting dark. All right, well that's good. We only needed one anyway. Now let's just cut the little piece out. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that piece out so we can just put that through the machine. Need a little piece of sticky note or something, washi tape. I must say the sticky notes from, from the Dollar Tree are not, they're not as sticky as Post-it Notes 3M. All right, so the sandwiches. When I say sandwich, here, let's tilt this. We're gonna use the die cutting machine, right? So the sandwich, I'm just gonna tilt that back, is that you need the base plate. That's this base plate like this. You need your thin die adapter, plate number two, and then you need the plate number three for the bottom, and then you need another plate number three for the top. However, because I'm just cutting something small, you would need another plate number three for the top, but I'm gonna take the plate from the mini cut and emboss machine and use that for the top because I find that's much easier to use. All right, so now what happened to my little die that I was just showing you? It's amazing how things just disappear, like in a flash. There it is, there it is. So you're gonna put that on your little leopard there. Try not to smear it, I hope your ink is dry. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my little sticky note I have post-it note tape, but who knows where that went. It's pretty cool tape because it's made by 3M and it's like made with the same stuff, sticky notes made up. But basically you don't want to use something that's really sticky because it'll rip your paper. 
So there we go. Put that little thing on top. Put the little plate on top. I just like to use the plate from the mini cut and bus machine. Now, in your kit, because my kits are pretty detailed, you should have some little shapes. Ooh, it came out nice, right? Little shapes that I've die cut for you. And so I'm just going to, you know, show you what that is. And we need a piece of this. All right, before I forget, I have to also show you what inspired me. This, this is what inspired me. I don't want to forget, but I know I'm going to tell you again later. But it's the whole thing is like, this is from my swap. And it is from Janet, or no, sorry, not Janet, Jane Stull. Jane Stull, another demonstrator. So this was on my incentive trip. We did 3D swaps, and that's what inspired me to make this little project. Okay, so anywho, I am going to put this down and take some notes. But I think I want to just cut out. I'm just kind of looking at this and see what else. I'm gonna, we're going to give you this piece. You already have that piece. And that piece is from another set that I'm not even sure if it's even carrying anymore, but I did put it in your kit. And it's, it's a set, I think it was like the mini pocket envelope die or something to that effect. All right, so in my bucket of crafty goodness, now you're going to use whatever shape you want to use for You're Too Wonderful. In fact, you can use, even use like the oval from, it's called... Let me see what it's called. That, it's all that dies. There's another oval that would work really good for that. Or you can use this little shape from your kit that I gave you. Basically, these are the things that were in your kit. You had some of these banners. You had this banner. You had this one. You had a little shape like this. But this one fits really well. Like I said, I think it's from the mini pocket envelope die. I'm going to go ahead and stamp a couple of them. I'm going to pull them out. So, also, I want to do a little bit more die cutting with you. Because, you know, while I have the machine out, then I can get rid of that and get, make some room and show you show you something, you know, with the Simply Scored and stuff. Ooh, that's coming out nice. So I'm just using You're Too Wonderful. Oh. Oh, I love it, love it, love it. I love when stamps come out nice. And I always, well, not always, but most of the time I stamp after I die cut because that I just like to have a bunch of die cut shapes ready ready to go. And I stamp later because I'm not sure which colors I'm going to need yet. So those came out nice. Now what we want to do is, while we're here, I'm just, I just got to take a look at this for a second. We don't need to stamp this because this is the little guy I cut out with my scissors, right? And I even thought this would be cute. I cut this out of the DSP as well. It's a cute little heart. It was from the little painter. There was a little painter making a heart. So we have this. And now we need this little flower. That's a little extra embellishment. So the flower is just a die cut flower. And I thought it'd be nice to show you how to use your adhesive sheets that are in your kit as well. So we'll do something with those. And the pool party. So the pool party is what I'm using for the little hearts because I just think it comes out, it came out nice. So here we go. Here is a piece of pool party. Let's see if there's any adhesive sheets handy. All right. What's an adhesive sheet? Adhesive sheet is how you're going to make a sticker with your dies. So what you're going to do is take a piece of paper, right, and a piece of cardstock that you want to make a sticker out of, and then you take this adhesive sheet, and it's double-sided. So we're going to go like this. We're going to peel it off, and it's a sticker besides. So you have this in your kit, your workshop kit, and those of you in the U.S. that want to create workshop kits, this one will be available, again, maybe when I do the Zany Zoo Bingo, which is June 23rd. I might make this kit available again. It's just that I had to stop with the kits because I went on a trip. All right, so basically now you have a double-sided, you're making a sticker, right? So this is ready to peel off. It's a sticker. It's a sticker sheet. It's called adhesive sheet. I'm going to flip that over and put the dies on this side, right? We're going to put those little flowers. I have a couple of them. Just use whichever ones. We're just making embellishments. And just put them over the sticker part. And then put your little die cutting plate on there. And that's how you make your little stickers. You're going to peel them off later when we put them on the purse. And add a little wink of Stella and you got some shiny little stickers. So that is how to make stickers using your adhesive sheet. See, they're all ready to go. They just need to be peeled off later. So you're going to take your little pokey tool, which is your take your pick tool. And you're going to poke them out of the dies. And they should pop right out because there's little holes in the die. So there you go. 
Now, sometimes the dyes are annoying me in, the, in that, and it's, you know, it's not a real problem. It's not a serious problem, but it's something easily fixed. It's because when these little holes, when you make little stickers, the little things pop through the holes, see? You get little bumps on them. And so I'm, I'm kind of annoyed by that. So what I do is I take a little, my little scraper, my little pampered chef stone that I use for when I'm making things flat, like when I'm flattening out score lines. And I just get rid of those little dots. It, it happens more when you do, if you're ever doing like cardstock, it happens more. Designer shares paper, they don't usually pop through as much. And it also happens when you have adhesive sheets because the paper going through the die is a little thicker. That's how you get rid of those little dots. Okay, so now we can get rid of this machine and not get rid of it totally, but just put it away on the floor. And I can now get out my grid paper so that I can take notes for you. And I will be using my Simply Squared. All right, so the notes are that you always need to make these little paper purses a six by six. I'm gonna go ahead and get out a Sharpie marker. So you need a six by six piece of designer series paper. Six inch by six inch DSP. Okay, now you're going to, to, you're going to take the paper and you're going to score it. And then you're gonna turn it and you're gonna score it again. Turn, okay, we'll just say 90 degree turn. Right, you're going to turn it around and you're going to score it again. Now, it's on the back of her little thing, but after you make a few of these, you'll have this memorized. And I just want to show you, like here, right? And there's only one little trick, and that's about getting the little sides stuck. So here we go. So score at, and I'm going to do it by the, the longer one first. I'm going to say, oh no, we can do it by the shorter one because we're going to we're going to do it a score. We'll do it the same way it's written here. It's only longer if I'm doing measurements that way. So four, one and a quarter times four and three quarters, right? Turn and score at two and a half and three and a half. And I'm a visual person and I know you are too. That's why you're watching videos. So we're going to visually show you this. And then there's a little strip and I used pumpkin pie. So I'm gonna say cardstock. Always use cardstock for this little strip because it helps reinforce the tops of your little bag. And that little strip is gonna be three and a half by, that's what I was talking about. I used the longer measurement first, three and a half by one half inch. All right, so those are your measurements. That'll stay there the whole video. We'll get back to that. But now let's get the Simply Scored. So don't worry if you didn't get those measurements. I know if Janet is there, yep, she'll be writing them in the comments. She always does that for me. She's my paper chef super team member all right so that's okay i want to show you i want to show you a couple things this is what i want to show you like because i'm making these for what's called um a 3d swap that i'm going to be doing still not sure if i'm going to be putting little ribbons on them i think they're going to look cute without the ribbon handles and i can still use the little clutch make the little clutch see like little opening right but they, for this one today we're doing ribbons on it but i just want to show you like this is what we're doing so that you could see that there's sort of a horizontal side like and, and a vertical side. Even though, it's, even though it's a square paper you're starting out with, I want to show you, like, this is the reason I put the paper the way I did. So, like, for this one, this 6 by 6 paper, I like to score the first set of lines this way because when you open it up, I like you to be able to see the little patterns of the critters. See the way the critters are? You can see the patterns, like, better. So that's why I'm starting out my score lines with the paper this way. But most paper, for like example, this gingham doesn't matter. This gorgeous gingham, it doesn't really matter. So first stage, I'm gonna show you the score lines. That's the first thing I'm gonna show you. Next, I'm gonna show you the side, uh, how to do this little tuck. And then I'm gonna show you how to adhere this. And if you wanna add ribbons, you would do it before you do this part, like before you do the adhering. So this is just sort of ones that I've been practicing with. So they, these are the in color paper, the one that she gave me as one of my swaps, that's what the inside looks like. Candy's already gone. And here's another one that inspired me. This is a very similar pattern. It's just a little bit different uh, width, but this is another cute little paper purse. See, it's almost exactly the same. And see this little keychain? This is from Rhonda Morgan. So I was inspired by more than one project to do this. 
And this is a nice way to t put a top. So I'm kind of going more like that. I thought, I thought you don't really need the little handles. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think you must have, you must have ribbon to be a paper purse, or can you still be a paper purse and be a clutch purse? So, do you, is it a must have ribbon thing? All right. So we said one and a quarter. So here's one inch, right? One. Here, let me do this. Let me tilt this up. Right. One and a. I'm gonna go up closer. One and a quarter. Just gonna make sure I'm. Doing this right. Ooh, doo, 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 doo. And four and three quarters. So basically it's it's one and a quarter from each side, right? It's one and a quarter over from the left, and it's one and a quarter over from the right. Now you're gonna turn 90 degrees, and that's it. And you're gonna do two and a half. Let's make sure, double check right. Two and a half and three and a half. Two and a half. And three and a half. All right, so we're gonna do that part again with a different paper. Not, we're not doing a different paper. We're still using Zany Zoo, but I thought we'd try. I thought we'd try with this paper. That would be cute because I think black has better contrast. But the reason I use this paper for this project is because I was doing the leopard. But let's do one with the black, with the little, with the little stars. Okay, so we have. You need to make a six by six square. My little thing was wonky because my little arm wasn't extended, but hopefully that still will cut right. And we got six by six, all right. So we're gonna just do that again. We are doing one and a quarter. I'm just doing it a little faster because it's the second time around. One and a quarter, four and three quarters. And we're turning it 90 degrees, or if you want to do 90 degrees, technically 90 degrees is that way, but either way, you're just turning it one quarter turn, and you're going to do two and a half, and you're going to do three and a half. Okay? So I'm going to let you see those measurements again, move that up, and then I'm going to use my little scoreboard to work on because I like to just have a little background here. So we're going to now just take your little spatula. Oh, I should have done... Let's see, Let's see if I did it right. Yeah, no, that's good. I did it right. So take your little spatula and you just fold in, you know, burnish all the edges. It's called burnishing the edges, right? So far, so good. It's super easy. This project is easy. Okay, so when I got to this point, I was like, oh, okay. And you're going to be doing the same thing. You're like, well, thanks for the instructions. And you're like, all right, there's something else, right? There is something else, but it's not written there. And it's the little trick I'm going to show you. So let's just first burnish the edges. I was like, oh, because I, I was thinking, do I have to cut these off? How did the side get shorter? I was like, okay, what's going on? And it's just, it's easy, but you have to figure it out sometimes. And now once you do, you're like, oh, okay. And then you, you can just make hundreds of these. It'll be easy to make mass produce these. Maybe you need party favors for a wedding or a shower or something. All right, so that's good. Now, you're going to, this is what we need. Let me just kind of give you, I got to always give you the bigger picture. This is what we're trying to aim for. This is the shape. This is what the shape looks like before you aim for that, right? We're aiming for this little thing where the little sides push in, right? and all that. So what you need to do is you need to take all this little flap here with the score line, right? And you need to go like this. And we're gonna do it four times, so don't worry because you're gonna see it four times. You're gonna just kind of wiggle your little finger in there and you're going to fold it, let's see, fold it over. So wiggle, wiggle, wiggle your finger in there and you're gonna do this. And it's, it's, it's gonna make more sense like once you do it four times. Okay, so you're just kind of wiggling your finger in there and you're getting that little shape. Okay, and then you're gonna open it back up and you're gonna wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. So you kind of get your, you just kind of pinch this little part and you sort of wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. See, until you get it to sort of touch the side. And I'm making it look easy, but you don't, you don't know how many times I tried it before it came out perfect. All right, so like, that's it. That's all you gotta do. And you, each time, you're sort of making that little line. 
And now you could have done a whole diagonal score, blah, 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 blah. But we don't want to do diagonal scores. Diagonal scores, like, they suck. They suck. Doing diagonal scores sucks unless you're using your brother's scan and cut and you're using, like, exact lines. So it's just a lot easier for me to do a fold than a diagonal score. In my opinion. Again, it's in my opinion. You might be like, I like diagonal scores. I think diagonal scores are easy. Then that's great. Go for it. Do a diagonal score line. But I just think this is a lot easier just to keep doing it this way. I'm just pinching, pinch, 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 wiggle, wiggle, wiggle until that lines up. You're just kind of lining these corners up. Okay? And then you're left with this little shape. Okay? This little shape like that. And then you want to pinch the sides like this to get the little gusset. See, you're going to pinch, 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 pinch. We're going to do it again. Don't worry if you're like, what is she doing? I hope you're following along. But if not, you watch the video again later and you follow along and you try it. So there's your pinch those in. And that's, that's all there's to it. So that's what we're doing. And we're going to do it again with this piece here. So we have a piece. We've burnished all the edges, right? We go out to this section here. And we just sort of get to the corner there. And sort of wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. See, these are harder to see, I think, on the black lines. They're a lot easier to see on the white lined paper. Okay, like that. Open it back up. You have to keep opening it back up because you need you need the space before you do it. And you can do that. Okay, open it back up. And we're left with that little shape. Okay, and you just sort of fold that one. I didn't even have to wiggle that one. That one just kind of went right into place. And you sort of fold it right up in there. Probably because I was getting faster at it. All right, so that's that. Now, we'll do one with ribbon and one without ribbon, you know, just to see. Okay, I'm just kind of pinching in the sides. Pinching in the sides. Who's with me? Who understands this? Who has tried this and has one done? Okay, yeah, Phil's saying ribbon optional. Let me say hi to you guys. All right. We have here Kathy in the house from Backyard Stamper, Lisa, Critters Ink and Designs, or Lizzie, actually. Okay. Oh, yeah, and you, so the die came from something fancy. She's talking about this one because yesterday in my video, when I did my swap video, I was wondering where did this die come from? I have. Where are you going to use, we're, by the way, we're using the Zany Zoo die for the paper, for the pumpkin shape. So I guess I do need the cut, die cutting machine again because we still have to make that shape up there. The Zany Zoo, unless I made extras. Let's see if I made extras. Yeah, I already have one. But you need to cut one out, okay, in pumpkin pie from your bucket of crafty goodness. So you're going to use the die from the Zany Zoo for this. But I was asking yesterday which one this came from. It's from something fancy. Okay, pronounced Lisa. Okay, good. I had the name right, Lisa. Good. And thank you for getting me back on track, Lisa, because I was only up to like saying hi to a couple of you. All right. Hello, Diana. Yes, I did enjoy the cruise. Thank you so much. Hello, Phil from Florida. And now I, I get to go on vacation with my husband this summer too, which is nice because it was, I went on the other trip with my brother, which is, he's awesome to go travel with, but I'm glad my husband, he's a teacher. He's finally out of school. So now we can do it, trips as well. Yeah, mini pocket, pocket. Oh, it is current. <gasps> so happy to know that. Okay, this mini pocket envelope die is still current. So that's even better that you can actually get this shape. So I'm glad to hear that. And Phil and Francis, thank you. Melissa, you're not late. We're just getting started. You got to see how to make the purses. Hello, Janet. Hello, Pamela from Colorado. And hello, Charlene. And Phil saying ribbons optional. Yes, I'm glad. Yeah, I just learned how to make them yesterday. So, yes, we're, thank you, Gloria. Yeah, made some for Chris. Diane made some of these for Christmas and put chapstick in them. Cool. I've seen different versions of these floating around for years, so I'm happy to share that. So now I'm going to take these. I already have these strips made, but you're going to go ahead and make yours. These are, the reason I have so many of these made already, I just need to cut them down to three and a half. They're already half an inch, or they might be a little bit bigger or smaller. But um, the reason I have so many made is because when I make my, my layers for my cards... Let's make sure we're doing this part now. We're doing the three and a half inch part. Three and a half by a half inch. Three and a half by a half inch. And you may have to trim it even a smidgen smaller than that too. 
But when I make my card layers with regular eight and a half by 11 cardstock, I tend to like have a lot of extra little strips left over that I save. And I was kind of glad they came in handy for this project. So three and a half. So you need some cardstock and then you're going to just use glue or something to attach it with. Now, you're not putting the ribbons under here so you can go ahead and just attach it. But when you do, you'll see that, see three and a half, I just wanted to do it three and a half with my trimmer to show you that even when you do that, a little tiny bit might stick out on the side, which is fine. You know I'm gonna cut off the extra, so that's just, I'm just saying it's fine though. So put a little bit of glue there, put those little reinforcements. Okay, so that's just a little strip you're putting there. If you want to make sure it's even, just fold your sides in. And then push it on one side like that, right? And then the other side, you can see that it sticks out a little. And you can then, you know, trim it off. with. But you need really tiny. If you're going to trim off any excess, you need the tiniest of snips. But I always start with the three and a half. And then I get that little smidgen off later. So let's go ahead and put that glue on there. I guess I can cut some more of this paper pumpkin. I mean, not paper pumpkin, pumpkin pie. Cut some more strips off. All righty. Just getting the little snip snip. Okay, so I did, I don't know where it went, but there was a little tiny smidgen that just came off there. And then the other side is just going to be the exact right size. All right, so that's good. That's what we have so far. And now we need to do it to this one. So I do need this little piece. And then maybe this is the right length or the right width. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut a couple more. Half inch by three. Let's see. First we'll do the half inch. Then we're going to say, what do we say? Three and a half. Three and a half. Smidgen smaller than three and a half. All right. Love the Stampin' Trimmer. We're having another starter kit special in starting tomorrow. So I'll get on and tell you more about it. But I always recommend, if you're getting a starter kit, to get this trimmer. And the Simply Scored. Even though the trimmer has a scoring tool, it's still better to use the Simply Scored, I think, for score lines. And it also works as a lap desk. And that's how I made these. I just played with these last night with the Simply Scored. And I was playing with some other concepts because one of my things I'm making is a modified version of that double fold treat pouch I've been making. I wanted to try to make it stand up. So I was trying different sizes like three-eighth inch, half inch, quarter inch, and trying to see which would be the perfect size to make something stand up, but still give me lots of room for my tea bags. And anyway, so I was playing with the Simply Scored. I love playing with it. It's so fun. All right, so you have those little pieces. And again, if you need to trim that little excess off. Now, I think, I mean, I think it's pretty good. Let's see. That side lines up perfectly. Ever so slightly. Okay, see, see what I'm talking about? That's not even a smidgen. That's that's a part of a smidgen. A smidgen is defined. In my case, I usually say that's a sixteenth of an inch. All right, so now for the ribbons. And what else are we doing? We're talking about ribbons. Okay, so I used this kind of um, ribbon. I used the lemon lime twist, but I'm thinking I'm going to try it with a thicker ribbon now. I'm going to try it with the petal, the, not, yeah, petal pink. I mean, I'm even thinking double ribbons would look cute, like both ribbons together, just a little bit more lining up. So you're going to get about a six-inch piece of ribbon. Well, maybe we'll try it. We'll see what the double ribbons look like. Now, I mean, no, you know what? I'm not going to do double ribbons because too much lining up. Never mind. Change my mind. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's not actually going to be a six-inch handle. I'm just making it six inches because you, you're going to tuck some of it under. So start with six inches. That gives you extra ribbon to, to glue. So now what you're going to do is let's get your seal. Okay, and you're going to put some, you know, you're putting seal plus in these sections. 
right? And I'm just putting a little bit right there. Now, you don't want to put it over too far because only where this thing's going to fold over, right? So what I found was kind of cool. It's just like you can... I'm stuck on you. I think it was easier to put like the ribbon right here in this section right before... Like this is what was easy to make here. Actually, put, the, put, put it over here. Right. What I found it was easier to do is put it right where this little part folds down. That's what I found it was like easy to do because then you remember to put it in the same place. So you see how I put like some adhesive on this flap? I put a little adhesive here too. Just to double, just to make sure that that ribbon is good. Okay, and then you're just gonna go like this. Like, like so. Well, it depends. Maybe if you want it, okay, let's just check how you want your ribbon to flow. So something like that. You want it to kind of flow like that so it's nice and even. So what you want to do now is put... Well, first put the little adhesive over there on this little flap because that has to stay. And then put a little adhesive there and kind of double check where it's going to line up. And you want it to line up right before so it can be tucked under the flap. Okay, So that's where I found it. And it was nice because it makes the other side pretty even. Even Steven. See that? So that's an easy way to hide ribbon, which I really love about this design, is how easy it is to hide the ribbon. Now the other side, you just have to match up, right? Cool, cool. Let's see. Got to check if there's comments or if I'm losing anybody or if this is like easier than you thought. I know it's easier than I thought. Okay, we're putting a little bit of adhesive there, a little adhesive there. Okay, and the first one's going to be easier than the second one because the first one you have to line up under there. But then the second one you have to make sure it lines up to the first one. And then I get any excess off of here. Like so. I just kind of roll it off. So now let's check that these two line up, or close enough, you know, like that they line up pretty good before you do the next one. Okay, good. If not, you rip it apart and you, see, if it doesn't line up to that side, you just, not rip it apart. You know, I, I don't want to sound like I'm going to rip it apart. Just lift it up and you fix your ribbon. All right, and then you're going to go like this and sort of, I kind of loop it around my finger like that to make sure it's good. And now at this point, before you seal the deal or before we seal the whole thing, you're going to go like that and make sure they're both the same height and they're both in the same spot. See what I'm saying? Good, good, good. Like like so. And then do easy peasy squeezy. Squeeze the whole thing together. And there you have it. And we'll do one without the ribbons as well. But that is how easy it is to make this project. And now we'll put the little flap thing. We'll put the little... This little guy. So for this little guy, I just put... One side over here. Oh, you know what? It fit a lot better when I didn't have the thick, um, what do you call it? The, the thin ribbons. It fit a lot better. So make sure you give enough space for that little, your little flap. Okay. And so I'm going to put the little flap there. And you could have hidden the flap and tucked it under and all that good, all that good stuff. You could have tucked it under the, before you seal the thing. So now you're going to fold this down. Okay, and then you're going to go like this. And now I have this really cool Velcro, and I have I have the Velcro linked in the description of my video. It's like, it's so cheap. It's like $3.49 for this really cool Velcro. I mean, look how cute these are. These are the cutest little things ever. They come in 56 in a pack. Let me find the pack. Well, I really did have the packaging there a minute. Here it is, here it is. So anyway, you can link and get these on Amazon. I am an affiliate. So even though I'd make probably just a couple cents, it's still, hey, it supports my channel if you use the links when you shop. All right. Every cent counts, but look how cute these are. So I'm just going to kind of put some together. I'm going to go like that. And I'm going to go like put the fuzzy one on, put the one on top of the fuzzy one. And I tend to put the fuzzy one at the top, but I forget which way I just did it. So it doesn't matter which way it goes which, but stick them on one side and then push them on there and then lift up. See? Yeah, so good. I wanted the fuzzy side up there. That's what I wanted. Look how clear that is. It's clear, it's tiny, and it holds your bag together. And then what did I put inside? I put Hershey Nuggets, of course. I just wanted to show you that I used 
a three and a, three and a half, or no, three and a quarter for my nugget. And I also have some chocolate I got overseas. So nugget, three and one quarter inch DSP times one inch. So for this one, I put, we're going to do some coloring and decorating, but that's pretty much the gist of the project. So I put a nugget in there and some little Swiss chocolates that I got overseas. So let's find the Swiss chocolates. Here we go. And the Hershey nugget. And just to show you, I just want to give you that for scale so you can see what fits in here. If you're going to put these in there, laying them down, it's kind of hard to shut. See, the bag would be hard to shut, the little purse. So you kind of have to stand it up. That's why I only put one of these candies because you could put two, but as long as you stand them up. Because when you lay them down, it's hard to shut. And I got these in the airport, these little Swiss chocolates made by Lint. So aren't they cute? And you put them in there, push that, and shut it. All right, so what I did is I put a little piece of petal pink across there, but I don't think this one would need the petal pink because I have petal pink on the handle. So this one I would put instead, you put a little piece of this across there. This would be the... The other, it's part of the dual pack, duo, whatever, pack. Ribbon duo pack. It comes in the suite of products. And you have it in your kit, too. So instead, I mean, since you have the petal pink for the handle, just put this across. Put the lemon lime twist piece across and put some extra. I know I'm at a weird angle here. All right, hold it steady. Okay, something like that, and then you're gonna cut off the edges, and you're just you're just embellishing is all you're doing. Embellish with ribbons or extra strips of paper, both coordinating colors that coordinate, of course. I know they aren't they the best Velcro dots ever. They're so cute. Hey, Enike from the Netherlands, nice to see you. Lynn's saying it's so cute. She wants a piece of pie. Now I want a piece of pie, pumpkin pie. Yeah, because I keep talking about pumpkin pie. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right. I'm just using these other snips. These are, these are by Fish Scares because I was using them for my really tiny detail work. My mom loves that kind too because she's a seamstress. All right, so anyway, my paper snips from the other, from Stampin' Up! are in my house, I think, because while I'm watching Netflix or Peacock, I am doing a lot of snipping, snipping. All right, so that's what we're doing for this. And I thought, you know, you could either use the heart from there to embellish it, but I do like... We're gonna show you the sticker that we made. I made stickers in two ways. So there's the smaller one. I mean, the smaller one would be cute, but I think we're gonna use, I'm gonna look for that big flower. I think the big flower is better. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna peel off. Remember we used the adhesive sheets, right? Because we made our own stickers. I'm bringing my light closer, so it's gonna get lighter. Put that there. Center it. Put the little, I think, the, put it right where the lemon lime twist can go under it. And then a little wink of Stella on your flower. Let that dry. All right, so we're ready for our cute little thing. And then we'll do this one. We'll just seal this one as a review later. Without We'll do without the um, part, without the ribbons, I mean. All right, so let's color our leopard. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to take your, what I did, this is just what I did. I'm using petal pink for the skirt and the face, and I'm using pool, pumpkin pie, I keep calling it, pool pie, pumpkin pie for the whole body. And I'm using the light pumpkin pie first, and I can use the big side. Do the whole thing. You're going to go over the, over the spots with the dark pumpkin pie. So you can go ahead and take your light pumpkin pie and color the whole, the whole thing. And again, how do I know to use pumpkin pie? I was just inspired by the paper. You don't even have to even stamp and cut this. You can literally cut this critter right out of your die cut with your die cut right out of the paper. So you don't even need to even color it yourself. That's why I love this paper so much. That's why I stocked up on it and bought like six packs. Well, more than that because I was doing a paper share. But I mean, just six packs just for me. Oh, and by the way, Speaking of designer series paper, you want to stock up tomorrow because we're having a sale. 15% off this paper. 
11 types of paper, actually. So 11 types of designer series paper, not just the 10 in the catalog. Maybe it's 13 types of paper. It's not just the ones in the catalog, right? It's the ones, it's even the, the online exclusive item called Irresistible Bloom. So I used the thick side for that, the brush tip side for this one with the light pumpkin pie. So now I'm going to use the thin side. So both of these alcohol markers, whenever you use alcohol markers, there's an actual, like a thin, a small side, small little tip. And I'm using that for the leopard's dots. And you could have blended it more with the color, but I just thought it was easier just to use light and dark. I'm just going over the ear a little bit with the dark in every spot. With the dark pumpkin pie. Okay, if you color outside the lines like I did, you're just going to take what's called a color lifter. And you can just kind of rub, rub, on, rub out the spots. See, so like you see how it's coloring outside the line a little. This color lifter lifts up the color, rubs off the spots. All righty, where are we? We are looking for the petal pink. So for the petal pink, I just did dark for the top of the skirt. Like that. Little ballet skirt. And then I went around the edges with the dark one. And you can even go over the lines a little bit. Then I took the light petal pink. I could have done the nose darker too. I'm going to make this nose darker. Then I took the light petal pink and I went over the whole face and the rest of the skirt. And it almost looks like white, right? But it, it, next to the white, it doesn't look like white. But this is, this is a really light color, this light petal pink. But I just thought these go well together because they are coordinating colors because they go with the, the sweet. And then I went to do the little ballet slippers too. And actually, you can use the darker, maybe the darker petal pink for the ballet slippers. Like was darker. I think I already did the nose. And then I did pool party. And the reason I thought of pool party for this little thing is because it goes with that little flower and that little flower. And it was pool party when you looked at it inside. Hello, Lala's Crafts. Hello, Phyllis. I know. I wish they'd made a koala with the stamp cupcakes too, Lynn. I, I agree. They should have made, oops, I gotta use the thin side. Because we have the cool koala, we can cut it out with this scanning cutter, we can cut it out. There's scissors, but it's still cool. So anyway, this, when you look at the paper itself, that's the wrong side, you know what I mean? This paper had a little flower, that color, that's why I used it. Then I take Wincastella, and I'd go over both these little critters. Oh, and I also used, it, by the way, that was the extra little thing I did. You're going like this? You're going to color in the little petals on this extra little dancer. Okay. You could, that way you have a little bit of elements, like a couple elements that match. You see what I mean? Because you have like, you have your pool party, pool party, and pool party. You're tying together elements. Little petal pink in the ears there and on the shoes. And you got petal pink tied in. You got the pumpkin pie tied in. I like to tie in the different colored elements in the projects. Like when you're making cards, you just tie in different things. And definitely stick around because we're almost done this project. Then I get to show you what other things I have just, you know, from Zany Zoo. Some of my team members have been sending me things. I have some swaps. I have, I mean, I haven't even finished going through all my swaps yet. And there's already like a lot of, a lot of inspiration we have for Zany Zoo. Super cool. Okay, now for this one, you're too wonderful. All I did for that is I used this lolly. Lolly, lemon, dark, lemon lolly, dark lemon lolly. Well, you can use dark and light, but just, just go ahead and use lemon lolly to color around the sides. Because if you don't and you put it on here, it's just not enough contrast. You see, when you put white on top of white, see, look at that. It just, ugh. If you ever notice somebody do that and you're like, why is it not popping out? It's not popping out because there's like no contrast. That's, it's such a simple fix that you just color the edges. I mean, you can use a blending brush and blend the edges, but this guy is so small that... Color of the edges. Oh, I'm so glad this didn't retire. I mean, be, the reason is I, I put this in a lot of my workshop kits. And I have cut a lot of these out. And I'm going to be putting this, I think, in the Circle Sayings kit. So my new card club is Circle Sayings. That's this month's card club. And you can register, I think, for the next 10 days or so. 
nine, ten days, and you can get the kit that will make all those cards toward the end of the month after I send out the kits. So that's going to be a pretty cool kit as well. So let's now lay out our little design. So you're going to take your dimensionals and do your little layout before you attach things because you want to make sure everything's going to fit. So I'll just, I'll just use some small dimensional. So let's say that's going to be there and that's going to be that. You just kind of do a little layout. Like everything fits. And I think I, we can even put this little heart on there. Put the heart up there maybe. Oh, how cute. Okay, so we'll put the heart up there. That's when I cut out of paper. There was a little, I don't know, was he a possum or something? He was doing a painting. There was one of the cute little critters doing a painting and they were, and then there was that little heart on the painting and, so I just cut it out of the paper. Oops, that one's not under there. Okay, so just like again, this it's, it does overlap. That one again, just put that there. Okay, and this one, I can pop it up with the dimensional. I'm just going to use the edges of the dimensionals. Like sometimes I use the edges instead of Oh, here it is. It's coming apart. There we go. For these bigger pieces. Never waste the edges of your dimensionals. Even though, I mean, we probably get like hundreds in a pack. But still, I like to be conservative with them. I mean, I do use, I use a lot of dimensionals. But I like to also save the edges of the packs. I'm just going to put that down a little. Because I want it to make sure that it's not like going to interfere with the little, this little part that's when you're opening it up. Okay, there you go. That's good. Now, this is going to overlap a little bit just to keep it inside the purse like it's going to overlap it's going to cover that a little bit but it's just fine and when you use alcohol markers like our stamp and blends they do bleed through a little bit but just fine because i'm using the basic white cardstock as opposed to the thick basic white cardstock thick basic white is yeah as if i'm conservative with dimensionals you're probably like mm, i don't think so look how many she's using Anyway, the thick basic white doesn't bleed when you color them. So put that little guy on there. Make sure he's not in the way. Make, see how I tilted mine away? So he doesn't get in the way of that flap. When you're trying to open him, right? Awesome. I think that side needs more Wink Estella. And the heart needs Wink Estella. This is even cuter than my one, my sample. Because I like I like the extra heart. It's an ex, a little added touch. Yeah, Wink Estella is you can never add too much Wink Estella for some bling. And of course you can add rhinestones too. And like you see how she added the dots? And that's a good one to add here for like the little clutch because it makes it look cute. See how she added the dots? Right? Three little pearls. So there's so many ways to you know so many things you can add. All right, let's do this one. I'm just gonna seal this one up. All right. So again, we had our this would be, I would make like that the front because what's really cool, and I didn't plan that, like how centered that is. Isn't that cool that you can open up and still see the elephant? Like how fun is this one? We can make this one a birthday one. All righty. Let me just get my, I'm looking for the adhesive. Here we go. Put, so when you're not going to put a little clutch on it, it's a lot easier to put the clutch on the outside. And then you only need to put glue on these side little flaps glue or in this case seal plus rolling adhesive you're just putting it above the diagonal on these little flaps and you go one two three four now we do need the little the little flap because of the velcro part to seal it is what you don't necessarily need the little ribbons so let's find a little piece just see what's in my bucket here I know I have another bucket that has those other kind. I'm just going to need a white one. Or unless I have one that, like a color that matches. We'll see what these are. So we could use one of these white ones. And so I'm just seeing what colors these are. No, these are from another pack. Yeah, these are from a different pack of paper, so these aren't don't coordinate. This one, yeah, that's an, these, are, these are colors that go with something else. All right, so we will use this little guy. And you're just going to kind of put them up, put them on there, center them a little, right? 
Make sure your whole thing is together. Make, push it all together. Center this little back piece and then fold it over and then adhere it. So fold it over. Then you're going to adhere it. Make sure it's centered and adhere it. Okay, good. Still got our elephant there. Our cute, adorable, tiny Velcro. Fuzzy side is going to go on top. I hope I did that right. Putting those under there. Hey, you know what? You could even put your two wonderful right, like you could probably stamp it right on that little flap. So I'm going to go ahead and put that there. Well, actually, no, we're going to do a little, little coloring around the edges. And I just need a different critter for my bucket of crafty goodness because I'm not going to make another leopard. Or I just cut something out. So that is how simple these are. So I think because I'm making 15 of these for my 3D swap, I might not use ribbons because I'm doing a lot of other little projects that I'm kind of working on. And, and, but I might use some more bling. And I'm going to use a different kind of paper. You, I think I showed you what I was up to with the little. Yeah, I think that would even look cute. A little, little bit of inking. So sometimes I just look at things and go, it needs a little something, something. Okay, let's see what just fell. Something fell. Okay, it's my stamping block. So actually I need a stamping block, so that's good. <laughs> It's good that that fell because I need that. So I'm just going to dip in the ink and just kind of go like that. Right. Okay, these need to stick. I need to put this part down there. You got to get the bottom part to stick. Oh, there you go. Once it sticks, it stays. That's good. All right, so what I'm trying to do is just kind of open that up like that. I just want to put a little ink on there for contrast. I mean, I didn't want to. I didn't want to have to take out the die cutting machine again and all that stuff. So I was just doing that. All right, good, good, good. And then I would put a little piece of ribbon across it and a little flower. Some things are better when you're, you know, flat. So you just open it up, go like that. I'm not tucking it behind because I don't want it to be so thick. That's why I'm just putting I'm just putting it across like that. I could do this all day because each one looks a little bit different. It's so fun. But we're not gonna do it all day because I like to be done with it. But you get the idea. That just all these extra little touches. That's our little flower sticker we made. You know what would be cute is like having like a piece of bling inside the middle of the flower. I'm just grabbing something like the, the only thing that's near me right now. These aren't in your kit, but this is just something that was near me. So I'm just going to grab these. These are called tinsel something or other. Tinsel gems. I'm thinking that little one will fit. This is lemon lolly, by the way. This color is lemon lolly, I think, in there. <gasps> That's so cute. Oh, my God. They all need these. They all need something in the middle of the flower. Oh, my goodness. What a little extra fun that thing that is. A little, there's a little plastic sticking off that one. Sometimes there's like plastic sticking over the side of the gems. Just these little extra touches. Just add bling, bottom line. Add bling, add a pearl to the middle, add something from your kit. You got lots of embellishments in your kit. So just add something to your little purses with whatever you have close to you. This just happens to be what's sitting in front of me because I was using it for another project, but you have bling. 
I know because I packed your projects with love, gave you lots of bling. All right, so we've improved upon the original design by adding bling. Okay, so now I'm going to show you what we made in parts one and two of the series, and it's just some other things I have from Zany Zoo. Yeah, I know. Isn't it incredible? Anika had the little gem just pops the project. Hi, Karen. Yes, I'm glad. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you're going to catch the replay to watch. Learn how to make these paper purses and all the little nuance, extra details we added. All right. Here we go. Here we go. This was, let me see what part one was. I don't remember which, and that's not even part of this part. Where's part one? Was that part one? Possibly. And this was part two? I think so. All right, it's been a while, but I, in part one of this series, we used... Lemon Lime Twist as the card backgrounds. And then we made the Raccoon Birthday Cards. We used Stitch with Whimsy dies to make this pattern inside the pumpkin pie paper, cardstock, I mean. We cut out the little clouds from the Zany Zoo dies and the little trees that we colored with the markers, the, the Lemon Lime Twist marker to, to coordinate there. We colored the balloons in all the coordinating colors, Petal Pink, Lemon Lime Twist, Pumpkin Pie, and Pool Party. We use smoky slate and a little bit of gray granite on the, that little guy. Okay, so then this one, I think this one we did next. I showed you a few variations of it. This was my sample, but then we approved upon it during the video. I gave you some retired paper in your kit, and I showed you how you could take the same design and different stamp sets and, and make different cards using the same design. So this is the same measurements, and there's lots of layers going on in this card. We have the basics 3D embossing folders back here for this layer of dots and for this layer here this one is without embossing the piece of foil that was in your kit we added extra ribbons you could see and this is my favorite right now one of my favorite ribbons i guess because i still love the leaf ribbon but i guess the favorite current ribbon are these glittered organdy ribbons and then these are just a layer of vellum layer of dsp lots of layering going on layers of ribbon dsp vellum cardstock okay so that's what's going on with these cards this is the same design just different papers and stamp sets. And then these other cards, I, I showed this one because we were, when I was doing an unboxing, I showed how to play around with this little alligator and just a cute layered card. This one was when I was showing the scan and cut tutorials and how to cut out the critters with your scan and cut and how to color the designer shapes paper. I've already given one of those birthday cards away. I don't have it anymore, but I do have this little one that we also cut out of the scan and cut. So you can do a lot with that. And then, um, Let's see. I don't want to show you my make and take yet that I'm working on because that's not completely complete. But I have some other projects that others gave me, so we can have some fun with that. So these are, this is a swap using that same Basics 3D embossing folder. This is from Keisha. And Keisha is part of my Beehive team. The, my paper chefs were all part of the Beehive team, which is my Uplines team. It, this is a gift card holder. A little gift card. Let me grab one. Fits in the little pocket like so. So that's a cute inside of the card. And this is the scalloped, is it scallop contour dies or something like that? Okay, now that was one of my swaps that, that from my team. And this is what my team member Jean sent me. And I really love this little sticky note holder. Super cute. And she uses a magnet, which is, I mean, look how cute these magnets are. Look how tiny. Look how cute the magnets are. It's a, They're almost as cute as our little Velcro. So anyway, that's a sticky note holder. And I love how she used, I forget what the name of that die was, but see how there's like a little bit of embossing going on with the circle too, which is really nice. And then these are a couple swaps that I received and I still have more that I'm unpacking. Here's one from a demonstrator in Germany. Check this out, the little alligator. There's like a whole ribbon. It's an, it's an evening evergreen ribbon on a long, long string with little flowers on the end, which I just think is adorable. I'm not sure what this is called and I don't have her name because she didn't put her name on the swap. I'm not sure what this is called, except I would call it a slider card, is what I'd call it. But I'm not sure when you put the ribbon on the outsides, what it's still called. But isn't that neat? How you just pull the ribbon and the little alligator comes out. And I look how she used Evening Evergreen and Lemon Lime Twist and her use of her stamps and her use of coordinating colors. It's just these little extra touches that I love. Okay, now this one. So that was a swap. Let me put that down. This is a really, this is a modified gatefold card. 
It's Zany Zoo by Katia, Katia Picolier. French demonstrator. Look how cute this is. She even used the little curtains because I haven't used those yet in my designs. See the little curtains? You got the llama knitting. You got the raccoons, birthday. You got some extra balloons. Look how cute. Extra layers. See, so I call it a modified gatefold card because there's a little gusset on the side and there's a little flow to it, like a little wavy flow to it. See how there's a little thing on the side. Okay, and last one. You're going to love this one. This one is by Create, Share, Inspire. Let's see, Stampin' with Rosie. Rosie Gonzalez. Rosemarie Gonzalez. I love this one because it has so many little pockets and cute things. So... We have, it's a bag. So let's start with it's a bag. And the, but the bag is flat. So instead of opening up the bag, she decorate, she like sealed this part and made it into like a little pocket holder. So this was one from the detailed desert dies. That's what they told me yesterday. Isn't that cute? This little dye pocket and little tag. And then look at the little bunny. And this is from, what is it called? The countryside in little sweet with the little, that cute little shape. So I hope these all inspired you, these projects. There will be so many more as I un keep unpacking my swaps and as I keep on having team members share things with me But because we're doing a product showcase on, Jan on June 10th. After that product showcase, I will have even a lot more examples to show you this month. So that's all for now. This is the Paper Chef. Thank you all for watching. If you'd like to join my card club based on the Circle Sayings stamp set, please... Join that card club. It's all you don't need anything but a stamp set. You don't need a punch. You don't need dies. Everything's gonna be included in your card kit. This is what this month's down here. Look under the description under my name there, and you're gonna see my offerings. And this is what my card club's based on this month. We don't go doing a lot as many 3D things, but we're gonna make lots of cute cards. All right, that's all for now. This is the paper chef. Have a great day. Yes, uh 3D club. I don't I don't do a 3D club right now, Lynn because I do 3Ds with my card club and I do 3Ds in all my workshops. So pretty much my workshops are like a lot of 3D stuff. Like we just did 3D. But um, maybe I'll do a 3D club in the future. I am doing an in-color club. That's more of a product-based club, but we'll make some 3D stuff in there too. I mean, we'll make some 3D stuff on YouTube too, I should say, with using the in-colors. All right, thank you for your question though. Bye-bye.